Good morning. Good morning. Good Praise morning. Good morning. Praise Welcome God. everyone to God is real. Yes. And we're doing a deep dive into Ephesians. We're on the fifth chapter, verses 17 through 21 today. It's our 34th day in the book of Ephesians, taking us two months to go through it. We pray that you're getting a blessing and that you are staying with us on it, doing the quizzes, and uh, we'll receive your certificate of completion at the end of this month. God bless you. We'll be right back. We're going to jump in and uh, learn about the will of God and being filled with the Spirit today. So stay with us. Don't go away. Welcome to today's edition of God is Real, brought to you by Faith International Christian Center in Bradenton, Florida, United States of America. We invite you to study the word of faith with us for undeniable proof of his name Israel, because God is real. Again, we're back. He is, is so very real. He's real. Praise yes. God. He's more real than anything your physical eyes can see. He's eternal forever. Thank you, Lord. And he hears and answers the prayers of his people. What an amazing, wonderful, loving, mm -hmm. heavenly father. Thank you, Lord. It's just overwhelming. It's just so wonderful. The joy of the Lord. Yes. And it's our strength. It's our strength. Praise God. We welcome everyone. God bless you. We are studying <laughs> Ephesians chapter 5, verses 17 mm -hmm. through 21 today. Let's look at our scripture for today. What does it say, Arlen? Sharing. Okay. Ephesians 5, 17. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding that the will of the Lord is. Don't be unwise, but understand the will of God. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about that. We're going to dive deep into that today, so hold on. Like Rhonda says, buckle up, buttercup. <laughs> Speaking of that, Rhonda's on with us. Hey, Rhonda. God bless you. Now, I want to remind you that we're having some technical difficulties with yeah. our Facebook page. We apologize. We've been working diligently to correct it, but we don't yet have the answer. So after the broadcast, we have to take this Facebook page down and then we put it back up later in the day off of a rumble feed and you can watch it then. Or you can go to the website up in the top corner of your screen, the left hand corner, www.god-israel.com. You can watch it all day on that. So um, give it a minute to load when you go to that page. It's in a little a black box there or a box above the chat and it takes it a minute but it will load and it'll be today's program all, all the rest of the day until in the morning when we redo it so you can find us there and uh, go to it and use it if you want to review before you take your quiz or if you just like to review it or if you want to share it with somebody you can share it right over there just send them the website and uh because until we can get this fixed, that's the best we can do. We're also going to sign back up on Twitter. Uh, so we'll be back on Twitter if you would rather find it on Twitter. Mm -hmm. But we've contacted Facebook and uh, we're working to resolve this issue. But at this point, we don't know. And also it's on Roku. Uh, Duke said it was Roku. By 10 a.m. it's on Roku and Fire TV. Mm -hmm. So you can watch it all day on that as well. Hallelujah. So uh, just some areas and ways you can do it because we're having some difficulty until we can get it resolved. That's what we'll have to do. Who do we have online with us? Ron? Yes, we have Mr. Rhonda. Good morning, Mr. Rhonda. Rhonda, Rhonda. Amen. Happy Tuesday. Edie Kennedy. Hey, Good Edie. morning in Alabama. Amen. My brother Frank. Edie's Martin. a prayer warrior. She, yes, she's the morning. first one on every morning, every morning at 4 a.m., yeah. which is 3 her time. Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. Thanks, Edie. Yeah, every morning Edie is there. Uh, thank, thank you, Edie, for praying with us. And also, Brother Frank Barn Grover. Hey, Frank. Morning. Um, Amy Herna also hey, in the Philippines. Good afternoon. Um, Sister Sandra, good morning. Hey, Sandra. Sandra was on with us in prayer, too. Yes. God bless you, Sandra. That's right. 
Trump said, we need to keep Donald Trump and his family in our prayers. Absolutely. Yes, Absolutely. Yes. And we are praying diligently for him during the Walk With Me prayer time. Uh, we're offering up quite a bit of prayer for uh, Donald Trump, mm -hmm. the presidency, the coming election. If you want to change your world and your nation, mm -hmm. join us for prayer. God hears and yes, answers prayer. Yes. Thanks, Frank. We sure will do it. Yes. My Pastor Blessing in India. Good afternoon. Hey, Pastor Blessing. Yes. Good to yes. see you, sir. Also, we have uh, Sister Adrian. Good morning. The Two for Christ. Hey, Sister Charlene and Brother Cliff. Good morning. Clifford, Charlene. Mm -hmm. And also Sister Laan. La in the Hello, Philippines. Laan. And also the Millers. In uh, South good Dakota. Good morning. They're yes. back and on the, the road. Sir. Yes, we're so happy for you. We're so excited for you. Yes, Amen. Yes. God bless you. Be safe out there. We love you. Mm, and uh, okay. thanks for joining us today. Thanks Praise so. God. Also, Brother Duke and Sister Judy. Hello, Judy and Duke. Yes, God bless good you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for being a part of God is Real. Praise the Lord. All right, so let's go back here to our scripture verse on it. Okay. Um, wherefore, be not wise, but understanding what the will of of the Lord is. Be you not wise, unwise. Be and what? <laughs> be and Sounded not like you unwise. said, be not wise. <laughs> Maybe you said unwise. I just didn't hear it. Be right. not unwise. There you go. Hello, Jordan. Jordan Grinsley. Jordan, good morning. Our yes. good buddy in Polk County. God bless you, sir. All right, so let's read this in its entirety here before we dive in all the way, verse by verse. So that's this is. Ephesians 5, 17 through 21. Let's read that. Okay. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is exists, but be filled with the Spirit. Okay. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. So we're going to learn the will of God today right here. What is the will of the Lord? Mm -hmm. We're going to learn that it is to be filled with the spirit. And then what that being filled with the spirit does for us. Cause us to sing from our heart. Praises unto God. Giving thanks unto God from our heart. And submitting ourselves one to another because we love God. So that's what it's going to accomplish today. And that's what we're going to see in these scriptures. Mm -hmm. So before we move forward, let's see what George has to say about them. And then we're going to jump in all the way. Okay. Okay, here's Georgia. All right. Georgia Yost. I do believe the closer you draw to God, you aren't going to be wanting to do all the things that are displeasing to God. We, uh, if we totally understand why Jesus came to the earth and the price that was paid for us and what it all was about, we can sit and relax and not freak out thinking we are doing this and that to please the Lord. We live by choices. Do you want to go to heaven? This is a choice. If your choice is yes, then find out what you need to be doing. The Bible instructs you. God gave us the Holy Spirit to direct you. Just because you have a cigarette hanging out of your mouth doesn't mean you are going to hell. You might mess up your health, but the more you start wanting to know God, it will be easier to take that cigarette out uh, out and hand it to him. It's God doing it anyway. Yes, amen. Just be a doer of the word and not just a hearer and you will be okay. Amen. You know, that is a tough thing for some people to give up smoking or drinking. Yeah. And uh, it's got to be God that does it. It's by the Holy Ghost, which we're going to talk about today. It's the Holy Ghost in you. And you're just you just yield to him and be obedient to him. That's a good word, Georgia. Thank yeah, you. thank you, Georgia. All right. So let's uh let's dive in here. Hello to John Javid there in Pakistan. Yes, yes. And John Javid. Who else? And, excuse me. No. No Kalapati. Uh, I can't. I can't read the whole, the whole name. 
Praise the Lord. The Navis old lady. Yeah, yes. Good anyway, morning to you. God bless you. Where are you watching from? Sure. There it is. There you go. Suresh yeah. Babu. Suresh Babu. God bless you. Yes, thanks for joining. All right, let's go over here and start mm -hmm. here. Let's dig into this and see what happens. Okay. Read it. Oh, please. Wherefore, be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. All right, so this is telling us understand God's will so you can walk in it, as Georgia was talking about. And to me, this is a stark contrast between much religious teaching, the conversation today, stating they don't know the will of God, that he's a mystery, and they're unable to figure out the will of God and know him. When he plainly tells us here, don't be foolish, don't be unwise, understand the will of God. Well, if you're going to understand it, you've got to know it first you agree mm -hmm. so you got to know the will of god to be able to begin to understand it so we're instructed here to understand god's will meaning that we must be able to know it and understand it or he would not tell us that he would not give us that direction so why would he tell us to understand it if we couldn't mm -hmm. well that doesn't make any sense that's not the way god operates so, um, the key is, if you're not understanding the will of God, then you're walking in vanity or foolishness or darkness, we discussed yesterday, unwise. So, you need to understand or know the will of God and apply it in your life. Hallelujah. That's our responsibility, to read the Bible. To seek him and to gain that knowledge. All right, let's move on. Read that, okay. please. And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. All right, so the Holy Ghost here is telling us how to understand his will mm -hmm. by being filled with the Spirit, not by natural means. Okay? Natural understanding or knowledge is drunkenness with deception and error and selfish man's way of thinking. Mm -hmm. But when you're filled with the Spirit, you take on the mind of Christ. And you have full understanding by the Holy Ghost revealing to you revelation knowledge of the Word of God and of God himself. Hallelujah. So, you cannot understand the will of God without the Holy Ghost. And I would submit to you that's most likely the reason most religion, religious people, denominations, well-meaning people, most of them believe that they can't know God or that God is a mystery and they can't understand His will. It's because they lack the infilling of the Holy Spirit, what we call the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Most of them have rejected that. They, they're taught that they get everything when they get saved. Well, legally, you are born of the Spirit. That is correct. But you need to fill that vessel with the Holy Spirit after having been saved. The Bible plainly teaches it's a second experience of grace. And so uh, many of them reject that, and they're taught in their schools that they get everything at once. They don't need tongues. That passed away. Miracles passed away. And so they have no understanding of the will of God because they are not filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So let's look at that from the uh, worldwide English. Okay. Do not get drunk with wine. That is living in the wrong way, but be filled with the Spirit. So, if you get drunk with wine, obviously that's living the wrong way. And that's what this Worldwide English New Testament mm -hmm. has said here. So, <clears throat> that is a natural way, a worldly way 
of pleasure and selfishness and you know a false joy mm -hmm. uh, and wrong information that causes a wrong lifestyle when you partake of that but when you feel with the spirit then it he reveals to us right living who we are in christ what our authority is in christ and our position hallelujah and he develops in us right living and the power to live that right living when we're filled with the spirit what a wonderful god of grace we serve we can't do it on our own so uh it specifically indicates here that to be filled with the Spirit is the very will of God. You need to note that because here, understand what the will of God is. Then the next verse is, be filled with the Spirit. Don't be stupid. Be filled with the Spirit. Don't be drunk with wine and living wrong, but position yourself to live right. How? You can't do it yourself, but you yeah. can be filled with the spirit whom he will help you to live right we have no excuse we really have no excuse yeah hallelujah it it it, it also draws a comparison of being drunk with wine and the way you would act crazy staggering uh, you know flamboyant mm. wild loud if you ever been around drunk people you know what I'm talking about he, he compares the two. He said he, he uses that as being drunk with wine and then filled with the spirit or drunk in the spirit. And uh, so it draws a comparison between a crazy drunkard and the way his corresponding actions are and in the unspeakable joy and uncontrollable uh, fun and and what can I say, but just uh, a different eternal kind of high that drunkenness gives in the natural, but you can get it in the spirit by being filled with the spirit. I'm going to show you that. Duke's got a question here. Okay. What's he say? Shouldn't we be doers of his word to totally understand the will of God? Well, you can't. You cannot not be a doer of the word and understand it. Absolutely. In these short 30 minute sessions, 45, if you please, um, I cannot cover absolutely every aspect of it. So what I'm trying to do is stick with the topic in the scripture that we're going over the verse by verse. So I can't uh, possibly include every aspect. That's why you need to watch every day. That's why you need to stay with us, not once or twice or one month or two months, but on a long-term basis so you can get all the counsel of God. Because we will teach that. But in this session today, it's specifically talking about being filled with the Spirit. Mm -hmm. And that is understanding the will of God or the ability to do so. Mm -hmm. But tied into that, without question, is the next step is you must be a doer of that word, mm -hmm. of which he helps you to do that. The Holy Spirit is the means whereby you're able to do that yeah, word. Yeah. So, yes, that's a good point, Duke. But so, please understand that I can't cover everything in a 30-minute or 45 or an hour time slot. Yeah. So as being, much as I'd like to. So being uh, being filled with the Holy Spirit is one thing to know God more into our lives, right? And then, Absolutely. And then from, from knowing, understanding Him... God in our life is wanting to do what His will is. Of which, that's what this, the word. we've been discussing the last few days, mm -hmm. and we're continuing today, is your lifestyle and mm -hmm. how you live, which is according to the word, being a doer of the word. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you're not a doer of the word, you're not saved. Mm -hmm. It's just that simple. All right, so he must be our Lord. He must be. He must be the Lord. All right, so the comparison here to the drunkenness and being filled with the Spirit is shown in when they received the Holy Ghost in Acts the second chapter. Read this, Orlin. Okay. 
uh, verse 13, other smoking said, these men are full of new wine. So here you see the comparison again before Ephesians. And here it's because they received the filling of the Holy Ghost. And then the people thought they were drunk because of the way they're acting. Some people watch Rodney Howard Brown and they go, I don't know about that. Or <laughs> Kenneth Hagin, I don't know about that. But then you think about these people here way back there when the church was born yes and they are acting as if in some manner that would indicate they were drunken people yeah yeah that, that's what i was also imagining when so they're pretty wild <laughs> and so don't snub or discount god's moving by his spirit so it's different to you that doesn't make it wrong because God is a, is a, I'm, he's just such a huge God. He can do whatever he wants. He can make people act what he wants. And, and your body, it just, when the glory of God comes, your body passes out. Many of them fall out in the spirit or they jerk or they mm -hmm. shake mm -hmm. or they run or they shout. Yeah, yeah. Well, these are kind of things that drunk people do, but we're drunk in the Holy Ghost. Yeah. But is it God who is doing it to them or it, it's a result? They're just they're so overwhelmed so with God. Yeah, reaction to... Yeah, they're just so overwhelmed with the presence of God and the feeling of God the, uh, that yeah. their body reacts mm -hmm. different than it would ordinarily react. Mm -hmm. Verse 14. 14. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day but this is what uh, this is this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. so prophesied thousands of years ago here it is coming forth about being drunk in the spirit verse 17. and it shall come to pass in the last days saith god i will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. So there we have it. This is an outpouring of the spirit. They were acting like drunk people, being full of the spirit. The same thing happens today. It's not unusual for that to happen. Hallelujah. So... Uh, I just want to point that out to you so you you will understand when you see these things on the internet maybe you're not familiar with them maybe your church doesn't allow that or practice that it doesn't make it wrong because others are experiencing that maybe you want to go check them out and get in the flow of that and see what you think of it in person hallelujah maybe you should be filled with the spirit mm. no maybe to it you should be filled should. with the spirit we no matter should. what church yeah. you go to Hallelujah. We should be filled and revealed. Now, there is a continual refilling of the Spirit offered to us. There is a baptism of the Holy Spirit after we're saved. We, and we ask to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which is the initial infilling of the Holy Ghost. But then we must be refilled because we live in the world. Mm -hmm. And so the world creeps in on us. So we must be continually refilled. So the difference between the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the refilling of the Holy Spirit or infilling mm -hmm. is that the baptism is the initial experience, with usually with the evidence of tongues or prophesying, whereas the infilling of the Spirit is a daily experience that we receive from him for refreshing, mm -hmm. to be full of the Holy Ghost, to go out and face the world. And you need to pray and ask him for that daily. All right, let's move on. Arlen, we're running okay. out of time again. 519. Okay. 19. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. You need to understand that this is the result of being filled with the Spirit. Okay? Let's show, show you this in another translation here, the New Life version. Mm -hmm. Tell of your joy to each other by singing the songs of David in church songs, singing your heart to the Lord. So here, this in the King James says to yourselves that most people take that to mean to myself. 
but he's not saying to myself here, according to the original Greek and most translations, he's saying in the group to ourselves. Mm -hmm. In other words, to all of us here in this gathering today, that would be yourselves, ourselves. Mm -hmm. That would be, we're to be speaking in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, singing, making melody in our heart. So there's a couple of things here, making melody and mm -hmm. in our heart and to the Lord are key phrases in this. Why? The spirit resides in our heart, which is synonymous with spirit. Mm -hmm. This is the source of our joy in singing. And our hearts must be full of the spirit to do this. And it is unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. See it here? To the Lord. We're doing this to God, mm -hmm. not to ourselves, for ourselves, but to God collectively together. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. As a result, again, of the Holy Spirit in filling us. It's from him. It's to him. Mm -hmm. And it's by him. From him, to him, and by him. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Well, so what do we do then? Let's let's take a look at this. Mm -hmm. And uh, here's the contemporary English version to read that, please. Okay. When you meet together, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs as you praise the Lord with all your heart. So there it is. When you meet together mm -hmm. yourselves. What do we do? Sing songs, hymns, spiritual songs. That's why we do that in church, by the way. As you praise the Lord, with the Lord your heart. how? With all your heart, from your heart, by the Holy Ghost, in your heart. Okay? So here in 1 Corinthians, um, it should have been 14. That's my mistake. Sorry. Let me fix okay. that. That's much better. Okay. Okay. What is it then? I will pray with the Spirit, and I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing the, with the Spirit, and I will sing with the understanding also. So, he is instructing us in the use of the gifts by the Holy Ghost in the church that we are to pray with the Spirit mm. as well as our understanding. Singing songs, praying. I will sing with the Spirit. And I'll sing with the understanding also. Mm -hmm. Those are practices that should be in the church today. Hallelujah. And when we get together in meetings. Hello to uh, Benjamin mm -hmm. in yes, Kenya. Yes. And Belinda. Belinda's on. Belinda. Yes. Hello, Paul. Hello to Thanks Brother T and Sister T. Sister T and Brother God T. Good you. morning. Brother Vanya also in India. Vanya. Amen. Hallelujah. So Benjamin's evidently had some sickness in the family here. Thanks so much, uh, brethren. You really pray for me, sickness of my boy child, and school fees. Glory to God. For now, my children are okay and are back in class. Thank you, our Pastor Chuck, for alarming to all Christians. Amen. Praise God. Mm. Good to see you, Benjamin. Yes. All right, so let's move on. First Corinthians 15, 14, 15 there. Mm -hmm. And then now to 520. Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So here we see a picture of the Trinity again. Uh, it's important that we note the Trinity because there are some people who are non-Trinitarian. They think it's Jesus only. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're good people. They love the Lord. They're spirit-filled, for the most part, Pentecostal. Uh, but they do not acknowledge that uh, there is three in one. Mm -hmm. But the Bible, clearly, you see that throughout the Bible. We point it out when we come across it. Here's one case of it, Ephesians 5.20. Listen up, those of you who take the quiz. This could be a question on the quiz. Mm -hmm. It says, giving thanks always for all things unto God. Okay, so God, the Father, and the Father, it says here, God the Father, is number one. We're talking in the Trinity now. And we give thanks to him. How do you give thanks to him? We're talking about by being filled with the Spirit. So by the filling of the Spirit, we're giving thanks to God. 
So that's number two. And then in the name of our Lord Jesus, that's number three. So we have Father, Son, and Holy Spirit represented right here in this verse. Giving thanks. How do I give thanks? In my heart, by being filled with the Holy Spirit. Mm. The Spirit. Unto God and the Father. That's God the Father. And then through the Lord Jesus. Mm. That's our Lord Jesus. In the name of our Lord Jesus. So again, the Trinity clearly portrayed here. And uh, very important that you understand that. Praise God. Thank you. All right. So let's read this in another um the contemporary English. Read that, please. Okay. Uh, always use the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to thank God the Father for everything. So, this is not saying, I want to point this out, this is not saying we're to give thanks for bad things. Don't misunderstand what it's saying, please. Mm -hmm. There are teachers that have written books about how you're supposed to thank God for the bad and the good. Because... For, every, for the word everything. Yeah, and they think that God is the source of bad things happening. Mm -hmm. And so they think, well, I was in a train wreck today. Thank God I was in the train wreck. A train ran over me, and I, 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 I thank God for it. Well, stop that stuff. That's ridiculous. God does yeah. not send bad things to you. And you do not thank him you know, for used, the devil stuff. Yeah, I used to thank the Lord also for like sickness, like like that. I think I, I used to do Why? that also because uh, I thought in through through sickness, through those trials, that uh, I used to think God gave me those trials for me to to know how how he works in my life, you know, yeah. like and that's what a lot of people are taught. Because if I will not get sick, how will how will I know that I get healed? That's what that's what I, I hear. So that's well, what because I, you are healed. <laughs> <laughs> it's so it's such ridiculous <laughs> reasoning. Say, you know, you cannot get well if you never experience being sick. So But you are already well. So that's why you have to get sick for you to get well. <laughs> so Satan is such a so master that's why of deception I used to thank the Lord for that and lying anymore. and blaming God. Yeah. And so he uses scripture like this. He twists them to make you think you're supposed to give God thanks in every situation and everything. When you don't give him thanks for evil or bad things, because he's not the author of those. You want to thank the person that's the, that's the author. And you don't thank for evil because you don't want evil. And you don't receive evil. You don't. When you thank people when they give you something or do something for you, well, no, no thanks to the devil. I don't want your stuff. I don't want your presence. I don't want your gifts. I don't want nothing to do with you. Yeah. So I'm not going to thank you. So I will thank God. So what he's talking about here is that the Holy Spirit in us with these songs and hymns and blessings and from our heart worshiping him, mm -hmm. we're giving thanks to the Lord Jesus Christ and to the Father by the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. So uh, these evil things should be rebuked, not thanked. And yes, you should recognize yes. it's yes. Satan. That's part of growing up is to discern. All right. So let's look here at uh, in the International Standard Version of this. Okay. You will consistently give thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus, Jesus, Jesus the Messiah. So I think here is consistently is a key word. We're By the Holy Ghost, we consistently live a life of thanksgiving to God. That's in godly things, in things God bestows upon us and does for us, not evil things. Don't confuse that. So if you take this all in context, let's go back up here to the International Standard Version and starting with verse 15 through 21, I want you to read this in context mm -hmm. so you can see the picture of this, why it is what I'm saying it is there. Go ahead. Over. Okay. So then be careful how you live. Careful not, how you live. Do not be unwise, but wise, making the best use of your time because the times are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish but understand what the Lord's will is. Okay. Stop getting drunk with wine, 
which leads to wild living, but keep on being filled with the Spirit. Right. Then you will recite to one another psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Well, then, now, now look at that. Then, after being filled with the Spirit, you will do these things. Go ahead. Well, um, then you will recite to one another psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. You will sing and make music to the Lord with your hearts. You will consistently give thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus, the Messiah. And you will submit to one another out of reverence for the Messiah. So notice here, you're to keep being filled with the Spirit, and then you will sing to the Lord songs and hymns, and you will sing again, making music from your heart. Mm -hmm. Then you will consistently give thanks to God. You see how all that's tied in with being filled with the Spirit. It's talking about yeah. these are the reactions and the, the actions reactions. of yeah. being filled with the Spirit. Mm -hmm. And then the last verse there, 21, you'll submit to one another out of reverence for the Messiah. Now, that's taking us into the next one, which is 521. Read that all. Submitting yourself one to another in the fear of God. So there was a teaching there when I first came into the this charismatic Holy Ghost movement of called submission. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's where they took this to the extreme. And you couldn't go to the bathroom without asking your pastor, well, was it okay? You couldn't go to the store without asking an elder, is it okay for me to go to the store? And can I go to Winn-Dixie or should I go to oh, Publix? And this was creating cripples in the body of Christ because Nobody could think for themselves. Nobody could hear the Holy Ghost himself. They had to ask an elder or somebody. It's not what this is saying. It's not saying that at all. And so that what that divided, just like the grace, hyper grace thing is dividing the body of Christ right now. That was a division and separated great men of God. There were five teachers of it, well-known teachers that we love today. They've gone to heaven, but they, they, uh, uh, a great men of God teach great, but they got off in this thing and divided the body of Christ and uh, did damage. And it's not saying that. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Wow. But it is a truth that we are to submit, submit to each other, meaning that Arlen's more important than my desires. My dad's desires are more important than my desires. Your desires, your vision, wow. your goals are more important than mine mm -hmm. because I submit myself to you to help you, to promote you, to bless you, mm -hmm. and to cause you to do greater things for God and to be all God has called you to be. And you're supposed to do that for others mm -hmm. as well. That's what he's talking about. And it's all in the fear of God. Let's look at it in another translation, the expanded Bible. Okay. Yield, submit, be subject. Yielding, submitting, grammatically linked to the previous sentence. And so part of being filled with the Spirit to each other out of reverence, respect, fear, or for Christ. Out of reverence for the Lord, because you were so valuable to him, he died for you. Mm -hmm. So if you're that valuable to him, you're that valuable to me. And that's what he's saying there, in reverence for him. So let's look at it another one. This one's in New Life Version. Be willing to help and care for each other because of Christ. By doing this, so you honor Christ. See, be willing to help and care. That's submitting mm -hmm. for each other because we reverence Jesus. Hallelujah. That's what he's done for us. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, we honor Christ. All right, one other one. Then we're going to close. Mm -hmm. All right, this is out of the voice. Verse 21. And the Spirit makes it possible to submit humbly to one another out of respect for the anointing. You couldn't do it without the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Man is prideful. Man is out for self. And uh, and he is very selfish. Mm -hmm. yeah. Unsaved. And so without the Holy Ghost, you could not humbly submit yourself one to another. It would not be possible. Mm -hmm. So thank God. That, that That's a good yes, word. Duke's yes. got a word here. He's got something there. Yeah, okay. Um. The more I pray in tongues, the more the Holy Spirit directs my prayers in line 
with the word of God. Absolutely. That's part of being filled with the Spirit. Without the infilling of the Holy Spirit, you cannot grow into the fullness of the Lord Jesus Christ that he's provided for you. You are you are missing out on multitude of benefits and blessings mm -hmm. if you refuse or reject in any wise the infilling, continual infilling of the Holy Ghost. You mm -hmm. must have it. Yes. Good word, Luke. That is correct. Yes, thank you. All yes. right. So Davika's on Devika with us up in morning. Canada. Hey, Davika. Yes. Hey, at the Rose. And Rose, the way over in the <laughs> Philippines. At the Rose, folks. Uh, you, uh, good evening, na. Good evening. My uh, Good morning, Pastor Chuck Kennedy and your beloved Arlene. And I'm late. Just get up. Oh. You must have taken a nap. <laughs> nap time. Yeah, yeah. that's all right. That's good. We love you, Rose. That's God good. bless we you. Do, we, do. we miss you here. Love you, Davika, Ben, Banya, Brother T. Yes. I love Brother T. He's been a good friend of mine for many, many years. Many years. If you need a car and you're in this area, mm. Brother T is your man. And he's at Firkins. He's in the used car department, but he can sell anything. If you need a car in this area, even out of the area, mm -hmm. you can ship it easy enough. Uh, they're not that expensive because he's going to save you enough money where you can afford to ship it. Mm -hmm. So contact Brother T if you're looking for a vehicle. Yes. All right. Yes. He'll give you an honest, fair deal. So go see him. Praise God. All right, Rose said she misses it. We miss you too, Rose. God bless yes, you. Yes, yes. All right, we love you all. God bless you. The, Thank you. Uh, the uh, quiz is online waiting for you. This will go off the the Facebook page, but again, you can find it on the link up there, God is, God-Israel.com. Yeah. Well, the rest the website, of the, the Roku. Website. All the links are there in the web, in our website. And there. Roku and uh, Fire TV also you can watch it all day and all the archives there so uh you can get it and we're working on getting the problem fixed pray for us please that god will give us wisdom to know what to do and how to fix it we love you yes and, thank uh, you so much god bless you all and we'll see you again tomorrow same time 5 30 in the morning we love you thanks bye-bye okay. you have been watching god is real airing weekdays monday through friday at 5 30 a.m with pastors chuck and arlen kennedy brought to you by Faith International Christian Center in Bradenton, Florida. If you would like to reach out to us, our phone number is 941-447-4538. Thank you so much and God bless.